see me too. That's the plan. <laughs> um, welcome back to uh, my kitchen here in Hayek today. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Jenny Falter, one of the local team leaders here in Bayside, Melbourne. And uh, today I have my beautiful Jules with me. You have just uh, met them in the quick inter introduction video. And we have planned an extravaganza menu for you today. Something different, uh, a little bit unusual, so not your everyday cooking, but definitely something if you, whether you go to the spring carnival or not, if you want to take these uh, items to your next picnic, you will definitely impress to last. So but before we get started, I just quickly want to um, let you know, we had a look into the um, into the feedback that you put in at the at the registration and roughly half of you are already TM6 owners, which is great. And the other half have either uh, the previous models, the TM5 or the TM31, or haven't made their uh, investment yet. So for those of you, uh, because we're going to use the TM6 here exclusively, so for those of you who are used to the thermal way of cooking. Thermal mixed way of cooking is always the same. It's the same principle, a combination of time, temperature and speed. So a transition to the TM6 would be actually very easy for you because you do understand how a thermal mix already works. And our TM6s are constantly getting better. They are receiving upgrades all the time. And uh, latest that we, we can't actually wait to, uh, for it to arrive is Cookie-Doo 3.0. That means um, that's the one where we can put our own recipes onto Cookie-Doo and get them guided onto the machine. That, <laughs> so Cookie-Doo 3.0 is about to arrive mid uh, to end of November. And um, that guided cooking is only available on the TM6. However, so what is Cookie Doo that I'm talking about? For those of you who haven't heard about it, I always call it the Netflix for recipes. So if you haven't uh, had the chance to get your own Cookie Doo account yet, you can do this after this class, not now. <laughs> Head over to cookiedoo.com.au and sign up and get a 30 days free trial and explore the recipes and the varieties that we have there for yourself. Today, we're going to have six different presenters for you and they're all together are making eight different dishes so you can see how we're doing them but also you can see what we're doing so this is what the thermics consultant does these days um, mostly virtual now we can slowly transition back also to the face-to-face -face, uh, cooking experiences again mm, we'll, we're going to ease into that and you're probably gonna see us less on Zoom um, in the future. Just for now, I think we're all a little bit Zoom fatigued, but um, if you're watching the recording, so you probably have chosen to spend the day outside, which is absolutely fair enough. However, so we wanna kick off our spring carnival and picnic shenanigans today with the beautiful Jewel Melissa, who is going to start, hang on, let me check the steamed pork pancakes. Let me get her onto, yes, onto the screen. And there she is. <laughs> Melissa. Working feverishly away. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen here in East Beckley. Um, we've got eight dishes, so I've pre-prepared a lot of stuff. Um, so what I just wanted to show you was the steaming of the pancakes, pretty much. I've got the pork, uh, which has been marinating overnight, so that's just finished cooking. So I've only done a half quantity of these pancakes today because I don't need them all for me and my two kids. So um, I have just quickly, the recipe actually says to roll them out, put them in little balls and then roll them out flat. I just thought it would be a lot easier to just roll them out and cut them like you do scones, which is what I've done. So I'm just putting them on some baking paper in here. And this is another, this putting your um, steamed bits and pieces on individual pieces, pieces of baking paper is a little tip that I learned. And it's also the same principle that we use when we do bao buns. And also if you wanted to have a go at making your own bagels. And if you're putting things on their little individual sheets of 
baking paper, it just makes them really easy to pick up and move when they're done. So I can fit six in the top layer there and I'm just going to do three down in the bottom. So dough is easy. Throw it in, proofs for an hour, roll it out and we're just going to steam it for six minutes. So um, the pork I'm going to shred, so I can do that for you now actually if you like. The other thing that goes on these little pork pancakes and it's a bit the recipe the name of the recipe is a bit deceptive because it says it's steamed pork pancakes so the pork's not steamed the pancakes are steamed the pork has been cooking in the firm mix and now i'm going to shred it and the other thing that the recipe gives you is some pickled vegetables which is just uh, sugar salt and rice wine vinegar that you just cook up for a couple of minutes just on a really low temperature and it just sits there and it just gives it a really nice tart flavor for you so um that's really about all i mean it's that's it, you cook the pork, shred the pork, steam the pancakes. So what I'm gonna do, actually what I can do is pop these ones in here and I've got these ones. I'll get these ones going on the other machine and I'll just quickly show you the shredded pork and then we can move on to the next person. And so like I said, I'm only doing a very small amount of these. So I've just got them sitting on their own little sheets of paper and then I'm just gonna go and stick that on the other one and steam them. Just excuse me while I quickly dash and grab the pork. All right. <laughs> I'm back. I'm still here. I can hear you. Don't talk about me. <laughs> and then obviously you can keep rolling because I've got all this dough. So we can keep rolling that again. Mm. So there's our pork. Been cooking away. Smells very, very Asian. -y. I'm very curious to see how this one tastes. So it does say to drain it off. So I'm just going to pour it through. Simmer basket. And then there's just pork in the bottom of that and fishing around for a spatula. And I'm just going to pop that back in the thermix and just shred it. So it's only pork loin steak, so it doesn't take a long time to cook. That's been cooking for 25 minutes, I think. And mm -hmm. it's nicely tender. Well, and you drain of, off the liquid, sorry. Were there a lot of in, uh, ingredients like the spices or was it? No, not really. And it's all, there's, there was nothing that I didn't already have. Like there's nothing unusual. It's Chinese five spice. It's poison, soy. Um, what else is in there? There's honey, there's ketchup manis, there's all that kind of stuff. So, um, all right, making a bit of a mess here. I've shared the recipe link in the chat. For, uh, yep. room for you, so. It was actually something that I saw. I always like to keep a little, I've got a little recipe collection of finger food. It's just nice to have something different mm. when you are. Uh, now I've been backwards and forwards to this recipe so many times today because I've done so many aspects of it and I can't remember what's before or after. So I'm just gonna tap on the recipe detail, scroll up and find out where I'm up to with the shredded pork. There we go, tap on that. Tells me exactly what I'm up to, which we like. We like being told what to do. And that's just going to be shredded for four seconds. It was a, a great little tip you just showed us there that you can go, it, whilst you're in the recipe, you can go back into the description and just tap, tap on the step that you actually want to go to and it will take you straight there. So no need to go back and forth with I have been backwards and forwards to these two recipes because I've been preparing bits and pieces all day. So that was 10 seconds. I think it needs a little bit more. It's shredded, but I think it just needs a little bit more, but you don't need to see me do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stick my pancakes on for a steam, finish shredding this, and then I can, uh, I'll be ready when you come back again. Okay, wonderful. So then we will transition over to, uh, to Megan. And hi, Megan, you look stunning today. Can oh, I? Thank you. Thank you. I'm just ready for the races. <laughs> Dressed to the occasion. I love that. Well, I've actually got a pair of jeans on, but you know, <laughs> I'm not sure the other things are going to fit. Anyway, what now I've got a confession. Yeah, sorry. I, well, I've got a confession actually. Um, Melissa, if you're still there, are they bow buns that you're making, do you think? But yes myself yes i am still here they're very very similar same principle kind of the same ingredients these actually have got sesame oil in them so they're very they've got a very asian flavor but yes it's exactly the same principle exactly the same way of cooking them as you do bao buns yep 
because um, you, if you know me, you, do, you will know that I do like cooking, but I have a confession because I bought these. <laughs> oh, you big fat cheater. Bow buns and are so easy. That's right. And of course, I don't even want to say now you said that. <laughs> it cost $18 and they're empty. If Shut it makes it. you feel any better, I've got a bag of grated cheese in the fridge. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, you know, but next time I will be making them. Okay, Not hard now. at all. <laughs> I feel so bad. Now Don't I'm making um, some little quiches, or I call them quiches, but they're actually gluten-free uh, tarts. So that's why I put tarts here. I couldn't fit it all on. They're bacon and broccoli, but this is really flexible. You could do tuna and uh, corn, uh, all sorts of combinations. So um, it's pretty flexible. And in, even today, it said the recipe has carrot, but I'm going to use um, red peppers. Um, and onion, I've got the purple or red onions. Uh, it talks about lardons. Lardons are just bacon, but um, a little bit thicker. So I just bought uh, uncut bacon and cut those into little cubes. Um, so it's very easy. Um, you put some oil into a 12 hole tin. Uh, so that's going to be ready for the mixture and I'll just show you how we get started. So it said carrot, but I've got some red peppers that's going in there and um, 100 grams of um, onion. So it says quartered, I've got those. And we're just gonna chop them as you normally would onion, which is three seconds, speed five. So, so. Oh, add some olive oil. So we were talking about this in holidays, weren't we, Jenny? Mm -hmm. that it's quite nice to add your olive oil and sometimes you get a more consistent chop. Yeah, I find it, it's, it's, um, it goes easier down on the sides. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. To the side of the bowl, yeah. All right, so I'll just chop that up. Five. And we're going to um, start cooking that. Uh, Right away, let's see. Yes, I'll just scrape it down, but it looks like we said it did drop down quite nicely. And we're going to cook that for four minutes on 120 degrees. Mm -hmm. So that's going to do that. It's not very exciting. So, what else could we talk about while we're doing that? No, no, that's okay. So, basically, then in the next step, you would add. Yes. So the next step, then, so we've got four minutes there cooking the onion. Then we actually add in the bacon. Um, and interestingly, we have the, bro the broccoli and it's about 120 grams, I've got it ready. Um, cut into little florets, um, florets yes, little wee trees. Mm -hmm. um, I probably possibly would cut a little bit smaller, but that's what it recommended. It actually tells you 10 grams each. Um, and they are actually going to be in there cooking in the basket, which wow. is very interesting. So it's not going to get a really soggy cook. They'll still be nice and crisp. Mm -hmm. And then they cook for about oh, 10 minutes. So there's another 10 minutes cooking with the bacon and they that in the basket. And then you just add in some cream and eggs and goes into your muffin tin and into the oven for 20, 25 minutes. So it's a really quite a quick thing that you could actually make very easily before you said, oh, let's go and meet at the park and have a picnic. Mm -hmm. um, because you could, you've got eggs, you might have cream, you could probably use milk and cheese. There's some cheese, mm -hmm. got that ready, which I grated myself <laughs> <laughs> with a grater. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Oh, that's great. So we could also, I'm just um, thinking you could also use a 24 um mini uh, mini yes i think the mini would be good really good the only thing i thought today i'll do it as as the rest of said because these are a bit bigger but yeah. i definitely think the little minis would be great to take you know if you did go to the races you're in the car park or if you're at a picnic because they're really you know just tiny bite size you won't need a plate yeah. um, so that's a good thing yeah 
Fantastic. So thank you very much. So you continue with that recipe. There's really not much more yes. to see, right? No, I'll show you at the end. What yeah, we're like. going to see then the end results. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Megan. And we're heading over to look at you, Sandy, dressed Hello. up. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Uh, so today, as you can see, you know, we're doing a lot of finger foodie type things. So at least we're out of, we've got freedom. We can meet up with our friends now, have little picnics, go to the races, do whatever you want to do. So I have chosen today the Gorgonzola uh, cheesecakes with pear jam. So I thought this would be a really quick, simple one for us to make. It literally takes maybe 15, 20 minutes tops. Um, so you can just throw it all together, take a plate whenever you need to, and you're catching up with friends. Now, let me just add, I hate Gorgonzola. <laughs> Um, but this uses Gorgonzola Dolce, which is actually a sweeter version and it doesn't have the stinky pong. Um, sorry for everybody else that absolutely loves it. My hubby loves it. Um, so it doesn't have that smell of the typical blue cheese um, that normal Gorgonzola does. So let's get started. So we're just going to start cooking and preheat oven just to 160 degrees because that's what we're going to be cooking it on later. Um, and it's just saying to put them into just either like little mini um, pans or even the silicon ones, which would be a little bit easier to get out. So I've just got those all prepared and ready to go. So it's asking for 10 grams of blanched almonds, 20 grams of buckwheat groats. Now buckwheat, I just use the buckwheat kernels, which you can get at the supermarket. Um, and they're a great source of uh, whole grains and they're gluten free. So just look for the buckwheat kernels um, in your supermarket. Um, if you're gluten free, it's perfect. So 20 grams of buckwheat groats and one sprig of fresh sage. So I've just got all of that in here. So I'm just gonna put all of that in. My lid on. And we're just gonna mill that now for 10 seconds on speed eight. Right. Is it interesting? Um, I can. I, I, interesting how this is going to smell with these combinations of these um, spices that you're using there. Sorry, say that again, Jenny. Um, I, I would be interested to, to smell that now of the spices that you just used. There. Yeah, that's right. So that's all just milled down now. Hmm. So it's um, it's really good. And this is just making the base for our little uh, cheesecakes that we're doing. So, all right, so we're going to go next. So now I just want 60 grams of unsalted butter. So I've just got the 60 grams in here. Okay, uh, a pinch of salt, uh, 10 grams of walnuts, 10 grams of dried pear, and that's it. So I've just got all of that together. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to dump all that in. You can see how quick and simple this is. So we're just going to put the lid on. We're going to do this for five seconds on speed seven. <laughs> we get a question here from Karen. What is a sprig? <laughs> so <laughs> I was, well, I always like to, to translate a sprig into to taste. <laughs> that's right. So that's what it's going to look like. So remember, this is just the base. And it's just asking to press one teaspoon of the base mixture into each tart. So I'm just going to do one or two and show you what that looks like. Now, Elizabeth is going to show you a little tool that is a really handy tool to have um, that you can get in the mix shop. Um, and so she'll show you that later, but I'm just going to quickly do a couple of these. I'll put this in and then I'll show you. Original method. <laughs> yep, when all else fails. Fingers rule. So all we're doing, I don't know if you can see. So I'm just pressing that down. Mm -hmm. um, and then once, then we're going to get onto the filling. Okay. So if you had the tool, it'd be nice and easy. Um, and I'll just keep going with that in the background. But that's all I've done so far. So I've just put the base in yep. and uh, press that down. And away you go. Second bowl. Do you have a second bowl? We love second bowls. We do. And for those of you who are uh, contemplating upgrading, let us let us quickly throw in that this is our uh, this month 
offer and also next month uh, until stocks last is get an extra bowl with your TM6 purchase for just, and yes, you will hear right, $29. <laughs> so it's a great bargain, I tell you. None of this clean and dry the mixing bowl instruction needed. We're just chucking our second bowl in. Now what we're doing, we're doing the filling. So our base is done, now the filling's happening. So it's asking for 100 grams of cream cheese. So I've just got that here. Just put that over there. Um, 120 grams of the gorgonzola. So I've just um, cut that up. It's really soft cheese anyway, so you don't need to finely dice it or anything like that. Um, one egg. So let's just crack that in. Perfect. Okay, one teaspoon of lemon juice. So I've just got my lemon juice. Putting it all in. So easy, this one, isn't it? Uh, 60 grams of walnuts. So I've just got those in. I haven't even bothered chopping them up. They're all just ready to go. Chuck those in as well. Um, and we're going to put our lid on. And we're going to start mixing that up. So this is just going to go for now for 10 seconds on speed four. Can imagine what the flavor is going to be with just those walnuts with a little bit of a crunch in, in the uh, middle. And so that's what that looks like now. So it's just all mixed up nicely. And it's just saying to spoon one and a half teaspoons of the mixture into each mold. So I'll just do that quickly now for you. Uh, let me do this quickly. All right. So. I'm just going to put a little bit into each one. A bit more. I'll lift this up for you in a second. All right, so I'll just do a couple. Just smooth it out so it looks a little bit nicer, obviously. You could probably also put it into, um, what's it called, these, these pipes? Um, piping pipes? Piping bag? Yeah, piping you could bag. That's the one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what we're doing with that now is, so we've already put one and a half teaspoons of the mixture into each mold over the base mixture, and then we're just baking for 15 minutes on 160 degrees until a filling set. And then we'll come back. So I'll keep going with these. We'll come back and then we'll do the pear jam. How easy. Yes, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you so much, Sandy. That no was worries. Cool. And here we're heading over to Monsi's kitchen. And again, another beautiful jewel. <laughs> Hello. <Thank you. laughs> Hello, welcome back to my kitchen in Cheltenham. This is the first day that I dress up in years uh, on just for this occasion. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is a beer and chili peanut uh, cluster. It, this is the easiest recipe, I have to say, the easiest. So I'm going to try to do it as quick as possible. Um, and then I will tell you about things. So just when they, I start cooking. Uh, I'm going to do the same. Well, I should have gone. I already done the, um, the, um, the sugar. So I convert my sugar into icing sugar. And then the next step is going to be adding some beer. I have to say there is a similar recipe, a similar cluster recipe with uh, several peanuts with herbs and spices. Never seen it with beer, but I tested it and it's beautiful. So I'm going to put 100 grams of beer. Saying that I'm doing it by hand, but you know that you can use your, oops, oopsie, I went over. That's why it's good to use your measuring cup. I don't know if you all know that you can use your measuring cup up to here. It will measure 50 grams or 50 milliliters in this case. And up to the top, it will be 100. Okay, so we're going to be cooking the sugar with the beer for a few minutes. And we're going to use this uh, simmering basket. So we remove the uh, measuring cup and we put the simmering basket in instead just to allow more steam 
to come up. Uh, so this is going to be cooking for five minutes, and and then I can pass it on. Or, but quickly, I will say after the five minutes, uh, I will be adding the peanuts because I already done a batch. I sacrificed myself and I make it already a batch. I use all my peanuts. I only have 150 grams of peanuts. And then I thought, you can put any nuts, really. So we use a lot of nuts in, in my house. So we, I, I'm going to put also almonds. So you can put any nuts. If you have allergies to any particular nut, obviously avoid that one and use the ones that you like because you know you can really work with any nuts. Right. So we're coming, we're yeah. coming back to you in five minutes. All right. We're just heading over to Elizabeth Kitchen now, and then we'll come back to you in a couple of minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Here we go. Elizabeth, over to you. Hi everybody, you're now in downtown Blair Gowrie and a uh, bit of an ordinary day, but that's good because it means we're not missing out on going outside. Today I'm doing for you Parmesan baskets with goat's cheese mousse. Now to save time, I've done a lot in advance. I've already got my recipe up and happening. I've already got the goat's cheese in there because we're starting with the mousse first. So we'll just pour in the pour and cream already weighed out. Oh, so easy. Just give that a little bit of a wipe. You don't want to miss out on any of that delicious cream. With the goat's cheese, I could lie and say that I made it yesterday. You can make goat's cheese in your Thermomix. Mm. I cannot tell a lie. I didn't. But next time I am because it's very expensive. Anyway, moving along. Here we go. Pouring cream and, oh, we're back to the sprigs. <laughs> Two sprigs of flat leaf parsley. Now I um, have it growing in my garden and a sprig's just like a little, one of the little stalks with some of the leaves. So um, I've also got two sprigs of thyme. I put those in together just to show you. This is the, this is the thyme. So you can see I've, <laughs> I've stripped them because it says just the leaves, not the stalks. So that's in, away we go. Oh, and this is me, very relaxed cook. Half a teaspoon of salt, I think that's about right. And ground pepper to taste. Well, I'm very fond of pepper. Actually, this could be quite a good workout for the flabby arms. Right, next, off we go. Insert the measuring cup lid. And it's 10 seconds at speed seven. Oh. No, no, so we can't hit. Sorry. <laughs> it's not. We can't hit it. We can't hit it. There we go. Well, it's yeah, that's just 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sometimes. Woo! Look at that. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now, it says scrape down the sides. Now, I actually haven't made this before, so I'm not quite sure if they're going to ask me to zhuzh this again but I'll just scrape down the sides. And this is the, no, it off the lid. It doesn't mention about the lid, but gee whiz, it needs it. Here we go. Scrape down the sides, insert measuring cup. And it's another 10 seconds. Beautiful. Yeah. And speed seven, not a surprise. That's fine. Yeah, there was the sprig. I'll show you, uh, later on, I'll show you a sprig of mint. <laughs> so. Now it says transfer into the spring and I'll just show you my little system here. Jam for it, it's never been used for jam. And I'm not going to do this for you, you don't need to watch this, but I'm just letting you know this is into the parking bag. That's holding the parking bag up, this is a glass jug. So I'm going to do that off camera. And what I'm going to show you now is the beginning bit of the little baskets. Now, again, I've already, we know, we know what it can do. That's the size of the parmesan and that's the milk product. So I've already done that. We've seen it before. We are oh, so fantastic. <laughs> and here is my tray. So the next instruction is to, to put a tablespoon, <laughs> a 
my dog is now misbehaving. <laughs> he knows that I'm live and he's kind of figuring, I'll get her attention now. This is what we're talking about. So this comes in handy. Uh, there's two sizes, you can see. Now what I'm going to do here, uh, when I've done Parmesan's crisp, I've just used the flat side of a spoon, but this is a little bit more efficient. So I'm just, it is a tablespoon of the Parmesan, it's just Parmesan pepper and salt, which you'll see in the recipe. And I'm just hammering that down and that cooks for five minutes. Now, Jenny, I do have some completed ones to show. Would you like me to do that now? Um, if you want to, but we can, let, let me see how far, how far is Monty? Can you wave Monty? Are yeah. you Thumbs up. <laughs> yep, my cool. machine, yes. Okay. My machine just called me to do the next step. Okay, great. So then as I mentioned earlier, <laughs> what we're gonna do is to add 300 grams of peanuts. In my case, oh my God, the smell. I'm gonna show you the, this is, okay, let's, let's see if I can show you. The beer with sugar. It's like a, I don't know, like <laughs> a syrup. It's like a syrup. And saying that, I thought of you, Johnny. I was thinking, maybe, can you make this with the um, rice? What do you call it? Nice to that. Yeah. Yes. Do you think that you can do that? Oh, yeah. Why not? Okay, so in my case, I'm going to mix uh, walnuts, oh, almonds and peanuts. But as I said before, you can use any type of, of nuts. And then it's going to ask you to cook again this syrup with the nuts for another two minutes. Another suggestion, you see, uh, heaps of different nuts. So yes, try different things to use it. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to cook it for an extra two minutes. So do, we can go back to Elizabeth. Yeah, no, actually we're heading over to um, Megan. So we will continue with the with the lemon pie over there. So we come back to uh, we come back to Elizabeth. Don't you all worry. We will <laughs> you will see her again. And um, by the way, just the, the what I what I what I thought of the beer and chili peanut clusters is in my dude food list. <laughs> well, we can do playlists. Um, uh, you can name them uh, whatever you want, right? Okay, <laughs> Megan, you're on stage again. I am. I am making a deconstructed lemon meringue pie. So how good does that sound? Um, so also for the sake of um, speed today, I've done some things in advance. So the first thing that you make is a little base. Uh, I've put it in a glass there. Uh, it says cinnamon biscuits, which is if anyone can jump on and tell me what they are, maybe speculars. Anyway, I use ginger nut biscuits, but I'm sure you could use um, granitas or any biscuit, plain biscuit with a little bit of butter, but it actually comes out as a crumb, so it's moving. So I've done that, it's just blending it up, very simple. Then you make a lemon butter. Uh, so I'm pretty old school with Thermomix, been making lemon butter for a long time. So the recipe they used was slightly different. Um, it said to cook at speed two, and I found it didn't really cook for me. So I like to use speed four. And when I say I'm old school, because a lot of the sauces we make, it's 80 degrees, uh, speed four for about seven minutes, like our custard, um, bechamel sauce and lemon butter. So all of those, I always think if I was on MasterChef and I was allowed to use my Thermomix, I would know how to make a sauce because the same time tech, um, temperature speed. Anyway, so I've made my lemon butter there and we're going to make meringue. So this always sometimes people find a little intimidating, but it's so easy. And this one's a little bit different um, because it's got lemon juice in the, le in the meringue. Now, what have I done with my bits here there? And it tastes quite like a little sorbet, but it's meringue, but sorbet-ish. So it's, um, and very forgiving. Well, let's hope so. Hope it works here. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm not even in the right recipe. Sorry about that. All right. The good thing about TM6 is 
that you can have your uh, recipes ready to go. So I've got my wheat, press the button, and I've already put it in there that I wanted to cook this today. So I can see I'm making my broccoli tarts. I've got some lemon butter there, although it's already in the recipe. And the deconstructed lemon tarts are here, ready to go. Oh, it says, do you want to quit my other one? Yes, I do. And then as um, I think it was Melissa was saying, we can look at the detail. I've already done some of that. So I'm going to swipe down to check where we're up to. We're up to the meringue, press on there, place the bowl in there. Now, normally we're always worrying about how um, clean is your bowl for meringue because you do want to have a clean bowl. You don't want any fat in there. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it's good to have a dishwasher clean or a vinegar clean, but really this one's quite forgiving because you're already going to be adding liquid in. So often we're trying to avoid liquid being in there as well. Okay. So we've got, it says to weigh out some caster sugar because we're going to be adding that. So I've already pre-weighed that. That's ready. So weigh that before you start so you know how much is there. All right. Put the butterfly in. This is your butterfly whisk if you're not a Thermomix user. Um, three egg whites, I've got those here. Put them in. And this one I've got to check. Some lemon juice, 30 grams of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And I have seen lots of lemons about, so it's a good time to do that. Or if you are not using them, you can freeze the lemon juice. That's quite good. Okay, so 30 grams, so I didn't weigh this. There we go. Good. And what does it say? So the, how weird is that, the adding liquid to your egg whites? <laughs> so it says, without your measuring cup, then we did. And it's four minutes, 37 degrees. So it's actually warming it up just to uh, tepid temperature and it's on speed. Four. So that's the maximum you should go at with your butterfly. And as you go, it says to add in your pasta sugar gradually. So I am going to do that over the next four minutes. So it's sort of a bit meditational. Just be there, be patient, start adding it in a tablespoon, teaspoon at a time. And at first you start to panic and think, oh my goodness, it's not going to work. And then that becomes a beautiful meringue result. So that's what I'll be doing. Okay, so you keep spooning in that sugar into the meringue <laughs> slash pavlova. So, oh, not really, maybe. We will see. We will see what, what the result is. I'm very curious. So thank you so much so, <laughs> so far. And we're going back to Melissa, who is... Um, Continuing, what are you doing actually? <laughs> I'm doing this, I'm doing the assembly, well, just the next part of the pancake. So I have made this look ridiculously easy, but can I tell you, I've been doing bits and pieces over the last two days. So now it's just up to the assembly part. But first of all, I have a community service announcement. Um, don't stir, keep your MC in your bowl because one day you're going to put carrot in there and forget that you've got your MC in there and chop it up. So that's my first community service announcement. Um, and the other thing that I want to say is these things are brilliant. So this is a host award. So if you want to get your hands on an oval firmer server, speak to your consultant because these are fantastic. So what I have done now, Meg, if you're still there, your bow buns that you bought, how do you, are, you, are they just steam them? Do you microwave them? How do you reconstitute them to use them? Yes. Um, Just curious. Steam, this is yes, a relevant I, question, Your Honour. You can steam them, but on the yep. instructions, it says you can steam them or microwave them. Microwave them. Beautiful. That my question. That the reason that I asked is because I have got my little steamed pancakes here. So all of these elements you can make ahead of time, um, and either keep warm or assemble them, and you could just. Take it somewhere, zap it in the microwave for 15, 20 seconds, and they'll be ready to go. So here are our little pork pancakes. They're nice and squishy. So they're supposed to be squishy. So I've just got a nice little board here. But the other thing I have kept my shredded pork 
warm in there. Now, there's a couple of bigger chunks. I think, you know, it might have been um, another five or 10 minutes might have been better for it to be completely cooked. But we're just going to do a smear of hoisin sauce on each one. I'll do the whole lot, but I'll just do three for now. Then we're going to put a little bit of pork on each one, trying to avoid the big chunky bits. And now I have kept some of the liquid because if this is something that you would want to, there's a lot of liquid left over by the way, and it's here in this bowl. Um, so if there was something that you wanted to make uh, the day before and then reheat, you might find the extra liquid in there might make it nice and um, moist again. So then I'm just going to get a couple of my pieces of pickled carrot and I'm not the recipe did have chili on there but my kids would think I'm trying to kill them if I put fresh chili on something so I won't but I've got some nice thinly sliced pieces of cucumber and a nice little now anyone that knows me knows that the recipe says coriander I'm substituting parsley because coriander is the devil's herb <laughs> Yes, you are right. <laughs> I, you will never find coriander. Actually, I lie. The only time I'll use coriander is making um, a korma paste because you can't taste it. Mm. Yeah. I so. Had a, <laughs> I had a good day and they put the coriander in it. So I almost. That happens. <laughs> different story. Oh. There's our little steamed pork pancakes. So I'll continue making those until you come back and then we'll get onto the fruit tart. So there you go. Very easy, like it looks, it's easy. Once you have had a crack at steaming your dough, um, it's it's easy, like it's, it's, it's weird because it's soft, but your um, pork buns and bow buns and these things, all the same thing, make the dough steam it instead of making the dough, baking it. Yeah, and don't pay $18 for. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, okay. Well, so there you go. But it looks looks fantastic and I'm getting they do look cute don't they we are by the minute here okay we are heading back to um what's your name Sandy okay. <laughs> I'm very forgettable don't worry so our uh bases and our filling so that's all still in the oven so that's all happening um they've got about what have they got about another eight minutes to go roughly so what I thought we'll do is we'll get on with the pear jam so that that's all ready to go so once, the, once I take the bases and filling out, we're just going to put those on a wire rack and let them cool. And obviously clean and dry mixing bowl again. Okay, so we're going to do the pear jam now. So all it's asking for is 70 grams of dried pears. So I haven't even chopped them up. They're all quite big. Okay, so we're just going to dump those in. And we're going to chop those up. Life's too short to be standing in the kitchen chopping, I can tell you. So three seconds on speed eight. So we're chopping those down. Okay. And we're going to scrape those down. You can see what that looks like at the moment. So it's chopped it down. So why would I stand in the kitchen chopping away? I just would not. All right. So we've pushed those down. A bit sticky, that's okay. All right, and what have we got next? So 45 grams of balsamic vinegar. I've just got a organic balsamic vinegar here, but you can use any old balsamic that you might have. 40 grams of water. So we're gonna chop the water in. And 25 grams of brown sugar. So just throw that in as well. How easy is that? One pinch of ground black pepper. So I'll just put a bit of black pepper in there. All right. And that's it. We're putting the lid on. And we're going to cook that now for five minutes on 100 degrees, speed one on reverse. Easy. Thanks, Jenny. All right. So you done? Um, the jam is just now cooking away for five minutes. Okay, so I think we're heading back to Melissa once more. And uh, <laughs> as per, at least as per my 
instructions is there. If that's a subtle dig, Jenny, that's not nice. You're lucky I'm organised. So I just want to show you. So I've made, what, there's 11. And, like, there's, there's so much mixture left over. So it would make a couple of dozen of these. So there's a lot of mixture. And what you've got left over, you could use for your bow buns. Now, I... Uh, I'm also doing dessert. So I'm going with, I'm sticking with the bite size pieces today. So this is the fruit tart with a chamomile custard. I made some pastry cases yesterday because I wanted to make individual ones and I wanted to have a bit of a fool around with them to see what method worked. So I, I did three different ways and I have really thoroughly greased the inside of these trays because I didn't want to go to all the effort and have them stick in there. So the first ones that I made were not terribly successful. They will do for around here. And then I rolled the last lot a bit thinner and they were much better. They are quite nice. But in the end, what looked the best and more uniform shape was using the tool that Elizabeth had, which is called the pastry shaper. So I have rolled these into about, so I just made another half quantity of the dough because I wanted to make some extra ones in front of you to show you this. So the half quantity, I've actually got a little bowl here because I know yesterday that they did stick a bit. So I'm just gonna dip it in just a bit of caster sugar. If you can see me there and you just press it onto the dough. Wiggle it around a little bit. If it comes up the side, that's good. And here we've got our uniform little pastry case, which is lovely. I'm just going to go and do all of those. So I won't do them on the camera because that's like watching paint dry, but I will keep going with those. And can I just dash to my fridge and grab something, please? Well, I'm going to do it anyway, whether you let me or not. Because I made the chamomile custard. So the chamomile custard's another thing that needs to be made ahead of time because you've got to cool it. So you put milk, sugar, and three chamomile tea bags, let it Heat, warm it through, let it steep for 20 minutes, take the tea bags out and then make the rest of the custard like you would normally do, which is what's in here. I feel like I'm a walking knit shop advertisement today between my pastry shaper and my paste, uh, piping bags and my thermos servers and everything. It's great. Um, so, yes, you've got to cook your um, custard, let it cool down, and then you just whip up some cream, fold the cream in through the custard. And I've got some berries. So you probably don't need to see me assemble those because it's just piping some custard into some little trays. <laughs> um, but I will keep assembling and then I can show you at the end. But, again, another one, like the pastry, it's very short. So if you're going to, my recommendation would be whatever you, if you're doing it in a big, if you're doing a big one, grease your, especially the fluted rectangle pipe tins, grease them really well. Cause you don't want, because you've got all that corrugated edging, you don't want to get pastry stuck in there. So grease them really well. The pastry, the butter needs to be frozen. You make the dough, stick it in the fridge bring it back out, use it, stick it back in the fridge for another half an hour or so. So it's quite a process, um, but you can just keep coming back to it and doing stuff in between. But other than that, it's just plain old pastries. Mm, okay, fantastic. Right, so we are heading back to Megan once more. And by the way, it just did plastic bags. They're going to come quite in handy for the Christmas season coming up, for cake, for the cookie decoration and gingerbread houses and whatnot. So because they do come with different nozzles uh, to put them there on top all right so now we are going to see megan doing the deconstructed meringue no what yes lemon meringue pies yes okay so i've got a few little choices for you so the one we're working on i had that glass um but i've got something you could do like a fancy dinner so we're going to do construct that and if you did want to go on a picnic, I've made these ones already. You could put them in a little jar. So there they are. That's the meringue I've burnt. And you can see the sides, the lemon curd and the biscuit and the meringue. So you could take those with you, um, you know, when you're going just across the road or something, or if you've got a little chiller thing in your esky, um, you can take them with you. Okay. Yeah, what have I got? Oh, here's the meringue in here and it worked 
treat. So let me just pipe one out to get it going. Okay, now, let me see there. Not as well as I'd like, but anyway, I'm gonna put one there. Big dog there. Show you that. There, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> and um, you don't have to put this into a piping bag, but um, hang on, move that back a bit so you can see. That just helps you get it in a glass. Right, and we'll put some in there. That's really deconstructed. Yes. <laughs> Putting it next to each other. Right, and oh, hang on, do the other bit of the meringue. Into that. Oh, yesterday I did little dots, but <laughs> this one is a very daggy one. And I've got a little bit of cream that I whipped before you could put that in there. I don't think we need it. I'm not going to put that in there. Put that back. Okay, now this is the fun bit. A little gun. See these little cooking, um, what do you call them? <laughs> Flamethrowers. <laughs> no, anyway, so. Torches. Great fun. Torches. It's blow torch. Okay. Get that turned on. Oh, hang on, I've just locked it. Here we go. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. Don't All point right. it. <laughs> oh, I'm running out of gas. <laughs> oh no. Hang on, I've got a little I've got some more. Oh dear. That was a bit of a disaster, but um I would just put a bit more gas in there, but you can see how cute that is. And you do the same with that. And then you can see as I've already done with those, you get that little top. So it's definitely, if you're gonna put them in jars or glasses, you really kind of need one of these, but you can do it in um, a grill in the oven, but not really in a glass. So I will fix that up. And so you can see it in a minute, um, but I need a little bit more gas. Sorry about that. That's yeah. Okay. No worries at all. That is rather impressive. And I know you had a bit of fun with the, the blowtorch already. So that's, <laughs> <I'm nervous. laughs> that's okay. And uh, we're heading once more back to Elizabeth and her parmesan baskets. Oh, well, I was timing it that that should have been five minutes. And it was, bit, you, weren't, you weren't long enough, Megan. You were supposed to be five minutes. <laughs> Sorry so, about that. Okay, never mind. I, I can pad for time because there's a couple of little things that I did. I made a batch earlier and in the recipe it says different ways of creating the little basket. So I tried both of the ways. So the one I actually preferred was using the, this tray and also being rose gold, you don't have to oil it all. They, they pop out quite easily. The lot that will be coming out of the oven uh, should be in a second or two. The other suggestion they have is to fold it, let it, when you take them out of the oven, you put it over and it sort of wraps around it. Hmm, yeah, I think that one works better, but you know, play around with it yourself. The other thing is that if you do, <laughs> if you're doing this method, I just had it on my bench. Well, it's just Parmesan cheese and um, it's quite oily. So I, I had to clean the bench. Don't like that much. Give me a second. Here we go. Probably going to do it myself now. Oh, we can add. I, wonder, I, wonder, I wonder if I should. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can quickly add, head over to Monty's kitchen and. Uh, I've got 40 seconds to, and then I can sh show how you wrap them. 40 seconds. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 40 seconds. I can talk it just in 14 seconds. Okay, just before I pour my mixture into the tray, he asked me to put some chili flakes. Well, I have a suggestion. There are a lot of clusters of recipes, and I added for mine also ground uh, comments, comments, 
Uh, you can put ginger, cloves. You can use the mist chai that we use for the gingerbread um, biscuits or for the gingerbread uh, houses. Uh, they are delicious. So you can put the spices that you like. So this is what it's going to look like. You know, it's a bit runny. I don't want it. And then I'm going to show you the end result. The other thing that I just done is that obviously because I use um, sugar, to clean my bowl, I fill it up uh, straight away after empty the nut into my tray. I fill it up with water and then I put some lemon. We did that. I think that is a recording about this one, this recipe. Yeah. Uh, so obviously it will clean and degrease your bowl perfectly. Okay. And quickly, as oh, I have the here. So this is the, what you're going to have. Um, they are still quite sticky. Um, the good thing about this is that you can keep it in an airtight container. So if you have visitors, if you go for a picnic, you know, have a beer or something to drink, it's always nice to have something to nibble, not yeah. to get drunk too fast. <laughs> Thank you so much, Monsi. And we, uh, we need to go back to Elizabeth because something's happening here. 40 seconds are over. You're... <laughs> Sorry. Now, I thought this one, this is what you, you use when you're doing cakes and you want to make it smooth. You've got it on that roundy thing. I thought this is going to work best to lift them off. And it works fine. So you see, I've just popped it. No, you can't. Um, I'm moving that back. I've just popped it on that little glass while it's still warm. You wait 40 seconds, but you sort of kind of really need to help shape it. Also, maybe that one's a little bit small. And this is where my other little thing comes in. Into this guy, I'm gonna move this back. And this little guy, remember this, the fat end I used to just pat them down and the smaller end just fits beautifully into the tray. And you just give it a little, little squeeze like that. And Biko, you've got your basket. And your little baskets look like this. So, Jenny, um, my mousse is still in the fridge. So I, I would suggest it's not very exciting watching me squirt some mousse into some bowls. <laughs> By the way, it was 180 degrees uh, for five minutes. It says four to six. My oven, it worked out five was good. So I was a bit daunted. I thought, oh, am I going to be able to do this? Oh, yes, I can. Not as hard as I'd anticipated. So I'll come back to you later with the finished product. And sorry about the dog barking. I had to put him outside. Uh, all good. But we, we don't mind dogs. We don't mind kids. <laughs> Just real life, real people. And uh, so now I am my turn. All right. So I've already popped the link into the chat box. We are actually making an iced tea. So Kids, uh, or the, when we were chatting about this, we thought, oh, we need a drink. So now we were actually, if we want to do a picnic, a family picnic, then we came across this iced tea and we are making it with a honey mint syrup and fruit ice cubes. So what I've done, or I've started yesterday, I hope I can, uh, hope you can see that. So we have these ice cubes and they are basically, I just have this, mm, Sorry about that, uh, this silicon tray, all right? And I just filled it with uh, a couple of blueberries, um, raspberries, and a couple of mint leaves, and they just freeze beautifully. And you just put them then into your iced tea glass. Or if you want to have a bit more fancy, then you can also use a cocktail glass. And so, yes, you need to pre make them, obviously, but look, they're, they're fine with anything, any sort of um, sodas uh, you like to drink and uh, then in the recipe we're going to cook the tea actually in the thermomix bowl and um, I have I have used it says a green tea so you could use a peppermint tea if you'd like or and I've used a, a rooibos because that's what was my choice and then in the next step so it says then pour the tea or, um, in, a, in a jar and continue with uh, the next step and that's the zero so what I've done here is I have because some of you might know <laughs> or not that I'm sugar free so I have uh, made it actually with monk fruit sweetener and 
instead of honey, I've used rice malt syrup. So for me, that's still sugar-free or definitely less sugar than normal iced tea would have. And also 30 grams of fresh mint leaves. So that's a sprig <laughs> of mint. Looks a bit sad, sorry about that. It's standing here for uh, quite some time. And uh, anyway, so we, we had just the mint leaves in there and then you cook it and reduce it. Um, again, also with the simmering basket method there on top. So I was lucky I also had the second bowl and uh, then you just strain it through um, the, the, the mint leaves out. There's a little bit still here on the bottom and continuing with the recipe uh, is basically adding now the syrup to the tea. And this way we go really all the way here to the top and it says just to stir that a little bit around so that uh, the tea had been chilled it was in the fridge um, and so has the syrup so everything needs to be cooled down that's why i can't really show you how to cook a tea and then <laughs> have it at the same time all right and then you can just pour it in a jar so that's my sweetened iced tea if you want to make a cocktail out of it i mean feel free to add beverages of choice to it <laughs> and then you got a sort of long island iced tea no it, it's definitely a different recipe and uh yeah and pour that over that over your fruity ice cubes just like so either in a in a long glass or in a cocktail glass we can just add your spirits there on top and decorate it with fresh mint leaves. Like so. Go. And where are my, where are my straws? Oh, you don't use straws anymore. I have a few ones. There we go. And that's your iced tea. Let me do a taste test for you. Mm. Oh, yum. That's really good. Yeah, so very refreshing. And it looks good. And um, obviously, it could be another highlight at your picnics. Okay, so that was really pretty much uh, from my end for the iced tea. So I'm uh, not having the alcohol now. <laughs> so, let me come around or let me come a, bit, a little bit closer and we are going to do another round of show and tell what happened in our various kitchens and i think we are going to let's start with melissa will we sure i'm ready Here we go. <laughs> i've had my kitchen looks like a bomb's hit it but i've had a lovely time and it's a shame i've got no one to share these with so here are my completed steamed pork pancakes and I'll take some nice pictures after. And here are my fruit tarts with chamomile custard. Oh, stay. Right, it's edible flowers. Are they from your Edible garden? flowers, exactly. They're not that easy to come by, but that is what they look like if you're looking for them. Mm -hmm. Edible flowers. But yeah, I've just, I've actually got heaps of berries. I mean, berries are everywhere at the minute. So I've got so many left over. So I will probably um, freeze those for Fruity Dream or I'll make jam out of them or something like that. But I've just done half a blackberry and half a blueberry because they're actually quite small. So you don't want the whole berry on there. But how pretty do they look? Oh, so pretty, really. Uh, Lovely. I think I'm going to make them later. <laughs> it was also very easy to make. You won't. There's way too much sugar in them for you, Jenny. <laughs> well, I have, I have my methods here. <laughs> Don't you <too worry. laughs> worry. Okay. Well, can That's I ask a question? Melissa, Please can I ask do. a question? So uh, how do you find the taste of the chamomile custard? Very subtle. Mm. It sounds yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah, it is nice. It makes a stack. So I've got the rest of it here in my... I mean, I haven't, I've hardly even made a dent in what's in there and I've got a huge container of it in the fridge so I well mind you I've got some more shells cooking in the oven so my neighbours are going to love me <laughs> yeah because they love you anyway but now there's food <laughs> now there's reason to love me <laughs> okay thank you so much Melissa great uh, 
presentation. I love your fraud and I love you sharing your knowledge with us. Um, thanks again. Fantastic. Pleasure. Heading over to Megan since she's already here. I am here. So you did get to see that one already. My little deconstructed uh, lemon meringue ta uh, pie. That's the home version. This is the um, with your family version. So you can see the crumb on the bottom and blueberries in there. And then as we talked about takeaway version. Um, and these have just actually just come out of the oven. Oh, oh, oh. So I haven't had a chance to take them out yet, but they smell really good. Um, and it says to let them cool um, before serving. So you don't want them really hot. And also they can be frozen. So that would be good. Like you could put them in the freezer and have them ready to go if you wanted to take them to school um, for lunches or for your picnic or going to the races in the car park. I thought I thought immediately, oh, they would, they would make great lunch boxes as well. So yeah. Yeah, and they smell really good. So I'm looking forward to having that uh, soon. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Megan. And you look stunning. Your, your desserts are always a piece of art. So thank you so much for sharing that with us and showing us today. That's so great. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're heading over to, again, what's your name, Sandy? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I just wanted to show you what the jam looked like. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's quite thick and it smells amazing. Um, and so it's nice and sticky and everything else. And all you're doing is taking out your little cheesecakes. Now, I've still got quite a few still just sitting in their cases because they are supposed to actually cool before we top them up. But I wanted to get a few just on a plate for you. So all I've done is you've got the little cheesecakes, topped it with a little bit of the jam and some thyme on the top and that's it so easy so um please feel free to try and make them and and take a plate to uh, catch up with your friends and yeah very easy to make they look very stunning so thank you so much for sharing that particular recipe with us today even you don't like the gorgonzola, and <laughs> but we have we have uh, people in the chat who really do love it. I personally love it too, so I'm definitely going to make that one. And uh, yeah, I'm going to impress for the next picnic we're going to have. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So we're heading back to Elizabeth once more, and let us see your baskets. Okay. These are them dressed. So I'm coming a bit closer. I can't, it's a bit hard to tip. So let's try that. Oh, that's a bit better. Okay, so you dress them. It's raw beetroot cut up into little cubes. Uh, green apple, Granny Smith apple, which um, I used, I must admit, I used, um, oh, what are they called? A mandolin to make the little strips because I'm a bit lazy. And it says walnuts, but I prefer pecans. So I've got chopped pecans on top of that. The other thing that it said, which was, really? What's that I go? I don't know if you've heard of micro herbs. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're actually the fresh herbs and the ones that are like little snow peas and all sorts of things. Um, I went to, we have a local um, fruitery down here called Seclunas, and I know that they're up in Melbourne too, at a couple of different places. And so I used this, the red rabbit, radish, which was quite often used in Japanese decoration and stuff. So they are yummy. Oh, and the other thing too is I, I do keto. These are, this is keto friendly. And if you don't make your little discs into little baskets, you can use them as just little biscuits to put yeah. whatever on which is what I tend to make a lot and I keep them in an airtight container. The other thing is that making this, you really need to eat it on the day, so to speak. You can't do it in advance. But if you've made your little baskets and they're in an airtight container and you feel that they might be a little bit tired before you fill them, you just pop them back in the oven to just dry them out a bit because the Parmesan's quite, I'll say oily, but that's not yum. So they are delicious. I'd love you to give it a try. And uh, that's me. I'm done. Okay. I'm going out to dinner tonight to a proper restaurant. <laughs> All right.
thank you so much, Elizabeth. It was um, great to see what you were making there. And I think uh, we've seen the, the, the peanuts already. Sandy, um... Monsi. Monsi, are we going to come back to you one more time? Or have we seen them? No. You will be on the time, so we kept our audience quite uh, a little bit longer than expected. <clears throat> We, we knew it was going to be hard with eight different dishes. Um, to show them all. So we we're racing a little bit through today to, to all the, our recipes. But still, we hope you enjoyed the show and we gave you a little bit of inspiration for new recipes to try and impress your friends using your Thermomix there. Um, for those of you who would be interested in upgrading, now is the time to talk to your consultant and we make sure that we, well, we try to get it your new upgraded machine on your kitchen bench before the Christmas shenanigans are going to start. And um, yeah, so Christmas shenanigans is probably going to be our, our next topic, but uh, for the next cooking class, we're probably going to move it towards the end of November, um, just to give everyone a little bit of break from Zoom, as I mentioned in the beginning. And uh, I hope we all see you coming back when we are planning and when we're talking about uh, the Christmas preparations all right thanks you thank everyone for joining us today and um yeah it was a pleasure as always and 